Sports People Hawaii has been brought to you by Fluger Honda and IBEW Local 1186 and its unionized electrical contractors. Hey, welcome back, everybody. You know, when it comes to riding big waves, there's no place better than Hawaii. And when it comes to photographing big waves, nobody does it bigger and better than a man named Little. You know what, it's, it's beyond my wildest dreams. It's something that I never went out to do, you know? I mean, I'm not, I never said, oh, I'm gonna go and be a photographer and, and it's gonna be my life, it's gonna be my career. I mean, I wanted to just get a picture for my wife for the house. That was four years ago. Today, there are many pictures that adorn the walls of Clark Little's home, and not just any pictures. They are some of the most spectacular images ever snapped. A rare look inside of a place that few people ever go. And for good reason. It's fun, you know what I mean? It's exciting. I'm getting down there and the wave's sucking up. It's pulling me out, but I'm trying to stay in as this wave is climbing, holding the trigger. And I mean, you hear the thunder, the bass, you know what I mean? I mean, you see it, you hear it, and then boom! You know, and you hold, the longer you hold, the more gnarly the picture is, right? The more sand gets sucked up, the more juicy it is. An accomplished surfer, Little says what he observed riding the waves over the years gave him insight on how they acted and how he could interact with them. But that's not to say that he knows how to tame the powerful force of nature. One time, like I remember, it was just gnarly, and I was, there was like, you know, 10 to 15 foot shore break, and I couldn't get in, and it kept sucking me out, and I was right in the impact zone, and I just had to drop my camera and just, you know, gasp for air, and I was just panicking. I was in panic mode, you know what I mean? And just using my instincts just to survive, and I mean, that was a real scare, and I, I kind of stepped back and thought, you know what, you better kind of assess the situation a little bit further before I, you know, go out, because well, it's perfect, I just want to jump in, you know what I mean? I'm a little tired. But it feels good. I love what I do. If I didn't uh, love it, I wouldn't go out there and get smashed around. Ironically, Little had no formal education as a photographer. No training. I, I still got the manuals are in plastic. Though he certainly could have, his father taught photography at Punahou School for eight years before moving to the University of Hawaii's Leeward campus, where he taught photography for another 22 years. So he taught photography and art, how's that? And all my life, I never, no, never paid attention. You know, went to the lab once or twice, and then just, as he's, he's already retired, you know, seven years, and I get into this photography thing, you know, four years ago, and he's like, well, boy, he's got this film camera, dad, this digital, and I got to show him, he doesn't even know anything about it. As you might imagine, dad is rather proud of his son's work. Images that have appeared everywhere, from the pages of National Geographic to the walls of the White House. I still kind of am tripping out and uh, to be able to do that, to travel the world, to go on the morning shows, I mean, you know, we went on one morning show, it was Good Morning America, it was snowing 17 degrees, we're in New York and it was just like, what am I doing here, you know what I mean, a little kid from the North Shore, you know, and it was ra radical though and it was just cool to be able to represent, you know, Hawaii. And you can hold the, hold the little button right here. Although he has thousands of pictures in his file, Little believes each one is perfect in its own unique way. Until the next time he pulls the trigger. There's always something new and perfect out there. That's the thing, you know what I mean? Photography, waves, wind conditions. I'm always striving to get something new, something fresh, something different, something extreme. So whether it's 10 foot, 20 foot shore break, or if it's two foot little clean tubes with the sun setting, you know what I mean, I'm in.
never ends. It's a never ending battle, but that's what keeps me stimulated. That's what keeps me going, is just keep searching for that next way, the next angle, the next backwalk, the next cave. I mean, that keeps me chugging along. That's awesome. In fact, I think I'm ready for round two. I'm going back in. 